Okay, so we're diving into the case of Rodney Alcala, the dating game killer. And honestly, even the name is just like chills, right? <laughs> You send over these articles, plus info on this new movie about him. And even just the basics are wild. Like a serial killer winning a date on a game show in the 70s. Mm -hmm. It feels too crazy to be true. Right. It's like straight out of some horror movie, but nope, totally real. And that's part of what makes Alcala's case stick with you. You know, He took something normal, even desirable dating and made it this weapon, made him seem harmless to victims, appealing even to the TV folks. Especially creepy when you consider one article said he'd often pretend to be a photographer. Mm. Wasn't the 70s peak time for that kind of thing? Sadly, yeah. And think about it. Back then, photos were a bigger deal. No social media rights. So a photo shoot, that was serious stuff. Alcala, he tapped into that trust photographer subject, kind of like how Ted Bundy used those fake injuries. It's scary how these predators zero in on those societal weak points, you know? Blows my mind they actually aired his dating game episode. Makes you wonder what they saw in him. Though the article did say the full thing is basically lost media now. Yeah, just bits and pieces left. Which kind of adds to the whole morbid fascination, right? We're stuck imagining the horror, watching these normal interactions, knowing what we know now, now about him. Ugh, so eerie. Like a puzzle you can't quite solve, even though, honestly, you kind of don't want to. But shifting gears, there are those reviews you sent, the Woman of the Hour movie, directed by Anna Kendrick, of all people. Not who I pictured for this kind of story. Right. That's what's so interesting. The articles were into how Kendrick doesn't go for the gore, but more the women's experiences, almost Hitchcocky, suspense from the psychology of it all. One review even said it's not that graphic. So how do they handle the murders if it's not, like, gory? They focus on the lead-up, apparently, how Alcala used that charm, that smooth-talking, to disarm him, really leans into the Woman of the Hour title, putting us in that vulnerable spot with the victims. And Kendrick directing. Adds a layer, right? One article mentioned she wanted to show how women are basically trained to downplay danger, be nice, even when things feel off. Ugh. Relatable, but terrifying in this context. Exactly. It becomes less about one killer, more about what women faced back then and sadly still do. Alcala is almost a symbol for the bigger dangers women navigate, just living life. So less straight true crime, more like a warning wrapped in a thriller then. Yeah. Reviews definitely hint at that deeper meaning. Not glorifying Altala, but getting us to see the manipulation tactics, the societal blind spots that let him happen. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Chilling true crime, lost episode mystery, and a film that's more social commentary. This deep dive took a turn. Back again. And you know, it's one thing to hear about a case like Alcala's, but this movie going beyond the headlines. That's what's really got me thinking. Totally. The dating game thing, that's just the surface, right? The, the articles you sent, they mentioned he could be linked to way more murders, maybe over 100. It's almost yeah. incomprehensible. That's what gets me. How does someone evade capture that long with so many potential victims? Mm -hmm. Was it really just like being charming? Charm. Or at least a good ACT of it. That's powerful stuff. Remember, Alcala used photography to reel women in, made himself seem trustworthy classic predator move and it worked over and over that exploitation we talked about right like who do we inherently trust especially back then who gets the benefit of the doubt chilling and we're thinking about because it's not a just alcala right it's about seeing those patterns ourselves the subtle ways bad stuff hides in plain sight mm -hmm. unsettling but we got to be aware okay but then how do you do that be aware without you know, going totally paranoid. It's a balance for sure. Trusting your gut, I think that's key. Something mm -hmm. feels off, even a little, don't ignore it. We need to empower ourselves, especially women, to listen to that instinct. No second guessing or downplaying. 100%. I've totally been in situations brushed off a weird vibe just to be polite. You mm -hmm. know? This case makes you rethink all those times. And that's what's gripping about Woman of the Hour, it seems. They said it doesn't show the murders directly, but that build up, that moment the victim gets it, this is really happening. Almost worse, right? That slow burn horror, the dread. You know it's coming, but can't stop it. Exactly. Gets under your skin way more than just violence. You're facing the manipulation, the fear, the not knowing. Totally different level of unsettling. Speaking of unsettling, those photos Alcala took of his victims. One article mentioned investigators found hundreds, many unidentified. Ugh, gives me chills just thinking about it. Those photos, they're like... Ghosts, remnants of these shattered lives, all those women, their stories untold, families wondering haunting and the fact he kept them the photos mm -hmm. adds to the horror you know what was he thinking pride or god it's awful to even imagine we can guess all day but we're left with the actions right 
Those photos, they're a stark reminder of the cost, the human cost, and all the questions we'll never have answers to. Makes your head spin, it really does. But it's kind of fascinating, though heartbreaking, how they're using tech now to ID some victims even decades later. Shows the power of not giving up, doesn't it? Even with such darkness, that drive for justice to give those lost voices a chance to be heard. Small comfort, but still. And maybe, just maybe, it'll bring closure to families who never gave up hoping. We're back, and I gotta say, this deep dive into Alcala, it's been one of the tougher ones for sure. It really makes you think twice about things, doesn't it? Like how we judge appearances, who we trust, makes you kind of question everything. No kidding. And Woman of the Hour, it seems like it's tapping into that. Articles call it a more feminist take on true crime. Interesting, since it's about a male killer. What do you make of that? Bold move, and I'd say needed. Shifting focus to the women, their vulnerability, their struggles. It makes us face those power imbalances that let someone like Alcala operate for so long, you know? Like those scenes they described where women sense danger but feel like they have to be nice, downplay their instincts. That's got to resonate with a lot of women watching. Absolutely. Speaks to that societal pressure we've got to challenge. Politeness should never come before your safety. Sounds like woman of the hour is saying that loud and clear, and that's big. It's about taking back those narratives, yeah. Yeah. Giving a voice to the voiceless, and maybe even, hopefully, stopping stuff like this from happening again. Exactly. And it seems Kendrick did it without being overly graphic, too. One article compared it to Zodiac, that tension from the psychology, those moments you feel trapped. Oh, like Zodiac. Which reminds me, the article said some critics thought the dating game scenes were the weakest part, actually. Huh. That's interesting. How come? Sounds like they went kind of over the top, trying to be funny with the whole 70s sexism thing, which clashed with the more serious vibe of the rest of the film, I guess. Ah, uh, I see. Tricky balance, right? That goofy game show next to the reality of who he was. Yeah, sometimes contrast works, but maybe not here. But overall, reviews were good. You know? Oh, yeah. Overwhelmingly positive. Kendrick's getting praise, her directing, creating that dread, but also handling it all sensitively. That's great to hear. It's like Woman of the Hour has the potential to be more than just another true crime flick. It's a conversation starter, something that sticks with you. I think so, too. And those hard conversations, sometimes those are the most important ones to have. Well said. It's like we've been saying, right? <laughs> Knowing more helps recognizing those predator patterns, trusting your gut, speaking up when things feel off. That's how we protect ourselves and each other. Couldn't agree more. Awareness is huge. The first step to prevention. For sure. So to everyone listening, we'll leave you with this. In a world that often feels designed to deceive us, how do we sharpen our instincts? How do we learn to really trust those gut feelings? And what's our role in looking out for one another, not just in our own lives, but our communities and beyond? Those are the questions to sit with. They really are. Until next time, everyone, stay curious, stay informed, but most importantly, stay safe.